قد أفلح المؤمنون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الأطهار اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن عداءهم أجمعين Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this video, we intend to respond to one of the online Sunni polemicists who try to refute and bring arguments against the madhab of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. We're talking about none other than Musa Adnan. We already refuted his father before and will still do it again. So without further ado, let's look at what Adnan Jr. said. So, essentially, to introduce people to this topic, the Shias, they believe in 12 Imams. This is a belief that they cannot substantiate from the Quran, actually. Something as fundamental as your belief in the 12 Imams, we should begin by saying it is something you cannot substantiate from the Quran. So, straight away, he starts with this common cope of asking where the 12 Imams are found in the Quran which is, to be honest, a pathetic attempt to try and cause doubts to the people because everyone knows, even kids, that nowhere in the Qur'an does it say there are 12 Imams and these are their names. Just like nowhere in the Qur'an does it say Abu Bakr is the successor of the Prophet and the rightly guided Caliph. That's right, the Qur'an doesn't mention every single detail about the religion and unfortunately, this is a tactic many of the Mukhalifin use where they only want you to use the Qur'an to prove your beliefs and as soon as you tell them that we can deduce the 12 Imams from the Ahadith, they staunchly reject, i.e. they're being Qur'anists. We respond by quoting what their scholar Al-Barbahari has said in Sharh al-Sunnah, page 122. Once you hear a man who does not want Hadith while you bring it for him and instead he demands to prove your point by the Holy Qur'an, then never doubt that he is a person who contains heresy, zandaqa, within himself. So leave him and keep yourself away from him. So, I'm sorry Musa, but if you really insist on wanting us to prove the 12 Imams using the Qur'an only, then you're a heretic per the admission of your own scholars. Yes, while the Qur'an doesn't explicitly mention the 12 Imams, there are many verses that do explain the foundations of Imama. As we all know, the general beliefs are explained in the Qur'an and the details can be found in the Hadith. For example, the Qur'an will tell you that you have to pray but doesn't tell you how. That's found in the Sunnah. Likewise, the number and names of the Imams are mentioned in the Sunnah while the belief of Imama in itself is in the Qur'an. That being that there is always a divinely appointed Hujjah on the earth whose obedience is obligatory. Some of these verses are وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا And وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ And وَجَعَلْنَ مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يوقنون. And وَجَعَلْنَاهُنْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ And إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرٌ وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَاد And وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعَثَ لَكُمْ طَالُوتَ مَلِكَ Subhanallah, I thought Allah always chooses the best of people and yet here we see that a non-prophet is divinely appointed. And other verses are And التطهير, which the Shaykh quoted. We're not going to go in detail and explain how all of these verses prove Imama as many books have been written about this over the span of a millennium. So it's safe to say we won't be able to cover everything in this video. Another point I'd like to mention, which Adnan Jr. and many of the Sunnis seem to get wrong, is that believing in the 12 Imams in itself isn't really an asal of the deen. What is an asal, however, is to recognize and accept the Imam of your time 
and naturally those who came before him. So yes, while today every Shia has to accept the 12 Imams to be considered a Shia, back in the day of, let's say, Imam Sajjad salam, it was only necessary for you to recognize him and the previous three Imams, in the case you weren't informed of the Imams after him. So this whole argument of, oh, show me 12 Imams in the Quran, falls apart, as we can see. Second point, I find it very, very interesting. He refers to Ayatul Tathir, that's what he calls it, okay, in Surah Al Ahzab. No, Junior, this is how many scholars of the past, both Sunni and Shia, have referred to the verse. The Shaykh didn't make it up, so please don't try to fool your audience. He refers to this ayah, but he fails to recite the complete ayah for you. But before we get into that, another thing that I'd actually like to mention is what is actually being discussed here. For anyone who doesn't understand the context of this conversation, as Muslims, we believe that the best of the people, khayr nas the best people to walk the face of this earth were the prophets. They were the prophets, undoubtedly. And we would describe this as shayh badahi. This is something that is such a basic thing that we would say it doesn't even need to be established. It's obvious. Why? Because if God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to choose people to be messengers and prophets and representatives of whom? Representatives of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely, surely he would choose the best of people. He would choose the best of people. So what does this man come and say? This man. All right. This is really funny. What he's basically saying is that if we say the prophets are the best of people, it's so obvious and logical and basic that it requires no proof. But if we want to say that the Ahlul Bayt are the best of people, then no, suddenly he portrays this as if it has nothing to do with Islam and that no Muslim believes in this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call an appeal to emotion instead of bringing actual arguments. He uses his feelings to persuade his audience Oh, the Shia believe the Ahlul Bayt are better than prophets. Yes. Now what? Prove this wrong. <laughs> he tries to argue that Musa alayhi salam is the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. As if that is supposed to prove something. If you want to use this logic, then he's also mentioned more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Does this mean he's better than him? Or could we say that Zayd is mentioned in the Quran? Does this mean he's better than Abu Bakr? Or we could say that cows are mentioned in the Qur'an. Does this mean they're better than Omar? What kind of logic is this? <laughs> For anyone wondering, we already made a video addressing this topic. Be sure to check it out. So, Adnan Jr. here spent four minutes explaining that the whole context of the verse, the verses before, the verses after, everything surrounding the, the verse is talking about the wives and the feminine is always being used. So according to the siyaq of the Qur'an, it's very obvious that Ayat al-Tathir is obviously talking about the wives, which includes our beloved Ummi Aisha. So there's no way she can be bad as the Shias claim, because she's been purified. And we reply to this. Ya subhanallah, didn't I tell you guys that they become Qur'anists when they start to refute us? They keep yelling that the Qur'an is obvious and clear and trying to portray us as if we're dumb and don't know basic Arabic which is why we have a wrong understanding of the Qur'an. We answer by saying that different sentences of the same verse can be revealed on different occasions. They're not always revealed together, as everyone who studied the Qur'an knows. One such example is the third verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Forbidden to you are carrion, blood and swine. What is slaughtered in the name other than Allah, what is killed by strangling, beating a fall, or by being gored to death, what is partly eaten by a predator unless you slaughter it, and what is sacrificed on altars. You are also forbidden to draw lots for decisions, this is all evil. Today the disbelievers have given up all hope of undermining your faith, so do not fear them, fear me. Today I have perfected your faith for you, completed my favor upon you, and chosen Islam as your way. But whoever is compelled by extreme hunger, not intending to sin, then surely Allah is all-forgiving, most merciful. In this verse, Allah gives us some laws regarding food, and then he says, today I have perfected for you your religion. Every Muslim agrees that these two sentences were revealed on different occasions. But hey, according to Adnan Jr., they're not, because the siyaq of the Qur'an is so clear, right? One of the biggest scholars when it comes to the sciences of the Qur'an for them is Suyuti. He states in his book, Al-Atqan fi Alum, Al-Quran, volume 1, page 1500, regarding the different fields of the Quran. The 26th rule, addressing one person and then addressing another. For example, 
But if your helpers fail you with a prophet, peace be upon him and his family, being addressed, then he said to the disbelievers, then know that it has been revealed with the knowledge of Allah. The proof he's addressing the disbelievers is, will you not then submit to Allah? Another example would be, indeed, O prophet, we have sent you as a witness, a deliverer of good news and a warner. Then he says, so that you believers may have faith in Allah and his messenger for whoever is reading in second person. So as we can see, even the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah who excel in the field of the Quran believe that it is a fundamental rule that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can address one person, then he can change and address another. This clearly shows that their argument is flawed about the wives of the Prophet because they are not necessarily addressed in the second part of the ayah. And here we want to ask Adnan Jr., is there something you're hiding from us? If we open the books of Tafasir, as every Muslim should, do they say what you're saying? Does the authentic Sunnah agree with you or contradict you? Why are you scared? We'll read in Jama'at Tirmidhi. When these ayat were revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, Allah only wishes to remove the risks from you, O members of the family, and to purify you with a thorough purification. In the home of Umm Salama, salamullahi alayha, he called for Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and wrapped them in a cloak. And Ali was behind them, so he wrapped him in the cloak. Then he said, O oh Allah, these are the people of my house, so remove the risks from them and purify them with a thorough purification. So Umm Salama said, And am I with them, O Messenger of Allah? He said, You are in your place, and you are more virtuous to me. According to Umm Salama, one of the wives, mind you, this part of the verse was only specific to the Prophet Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. If the wives are part of this verse as you claim, then why wasn't she under the cloak and purified with them? Or are you telling us that Umm al-Mu'mineen, Umm Salama alayhi salam, is lying and she's not part of Ahlul Sunnah? There's countless narrations and books saying this. The brother Abu Tufail has shown many of them in the debate he had, so you're free to watch it and check them out. So what you're doing here, Adnan Jr., is rejecting the Sunnah. I suggest you stick to what your Shaykh al-Islam has said. Pay very close attention. Ibn Taymiyyah says in his book, Majma al-Fatawa, volume 13, page 18, something that needs to be taught is that the Quran and Hadiths, if we have tafsir regarding it from the Prophet, then there is no need for the grammarians to make their own interpretations. Since we have the meaning of it from the Prophet, وآله, we don't need to use the sayings of the grammarians. You have the tafsir of this verse from the Prophet, so why are you making your own interpretation? Why don't you abandon your Quranist tendencies and accept the Sunnah? Or do you think you know more than the Prophet If the wives aren't purified, then I'm sorry, but the Quran wasn't revealed as your liking, Junior. Because they are Ahlul Bayt, not according to me, not according to you, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Quran, the siyaq, the context of the Quran. Ahsant. Please do not hold blasphemous views about the wise, especially when the wives themselves didn't have this view. We don't want to disrespect Ummahat al mumin And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Imama, the whole idea of Imama believing in 12 Imams and one of them is hiding away, etc. You guys believe and they, you believe they're ma'asum and all of these things. Just establish this from the Quran. Establish this from the Quran, from the fundamental beliefs of the Muslims are, for example, that Allah is one. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a prophet of Allah. That he was the last prophet. All of these I can establish for you from the Quran. No, it is according to you, as we just have shown. We don't live in the era of sticks and stones anymore. Today everyone can read and clearly see through your lies. Come on now. So again, he wants us to establish our beliefs using only the Quran. But we have already said that by doing so, he fell into heresy and no one should approach him, as his scholars have mentioned. That the Sahaba were great people. I can establish this for you from the Quran, the ayats that speak about the Muhajireen and the Ansar. All of these ayat in the Quran, we can speak about them and reference them for you clearly. So please do not try and pull the wool over our eyes. All right. Now he's claiming he can establish the Sahaba were good people from the Qur'an. 
Why is it that Sunnis have this misconception that we disagree with them and hate every single Sahabi? On the contrary, we love Imam Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, Ammar, Jabir, Hudayfa, Zaid, Bilal, Ja'far al-Tayyar and Hamza, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Khuzayma, Uthman bin Mad'oon, Abu Tufail and so many others. Or do you think Abu Bakr, Omar and Uthman are the only Sahaba out there? What's funny is he's trying to prove every single Sahabi was good using the Qur'an, which is laughable. The belief that any person who met the Prophet for as simple as five minutes and died as a Muslim is automatically trustworthy and granted paradise is completely irrational and absurd. He says, The ayat that speak of the Muhajirin and the Ansar وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِأَحْسَانِ No, that's not what the verse says. The verse says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ And the foremost first from the Muhajirin and the Ansar. Meaning from some of them, not all of them. It's ironic how you accuse the Shia Shaykh of not reading the verse fully, but here we see you doing the same thing. Anyone who knows basic Arabic knows this verse is addressing only a group of the Sahaba, not all of them. And who is this group to be precise? The majority of scholars took the view that it referred to those who prayed towards the Qiblatayn, as we find in Tafsir ibn Kathir, and this is volume 4, page 339. As Shabi said, the forerunners amongst the Muhajji and the Ansar are the people who gave the pledge under the tree. He's the only one who says this. What do the others say? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Sa'id al-Musayyab, Muhammad bin Sirin, Hassan al basir and Qutada all say that the forerunners amongst the Muhajji and the Ansar are the people who pray towards the two directions with the Prophet So in no way does this verse support Adalat al-Sahaba. And what's even funnier is that when we investigate even more, we find that this verse is talking about less than a dozen people. We read in the following tafsir, which was praised by Imam al-Shafi'i, called Tafsir Maqatil bin Sulaiman. It's found in volume 2, page 68. والسابقون إلى الإسلام الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار الذين صلوا إلى القبلتين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام وعشر نفر من أهل بدر. And the first forerunners, the first to Islam, among the Muhajirin and the Ansar, those who prayed towards the Qiblatayn, the two directions, who include Ali bin Abi Talib, peace be upon him, and ten companions from the soldiers of Badr. So no, Junior, you didn't prove all the Sahaba were good, you only proved 11 of them were, of which you only know the name of only one, Imam Ali alayhi salam. What a surprise! You have more than 100,000 names to prove, you can do it, I believe in you. So please, don't try to pull the wool over our eyes, okay? The best people, and as I mentioned in the beginning, to walk the face of this earth were the prophets, were the prophets, and then come others. All right, before we continue, I want to make something clear. Believing that the Ahlul Bayt are necessarily better than the prophets isn't an asal of our religion. Sheikh Al-Mufid writes in his book, Awa'al Al-Maqalat, page 70 to 71. Number 46, the sayings of favoring between the A'imma and the prophets, peace be upon them both. A group of the Imamiyah has affirmed the belief that the Imams are greater than all the prophets and messengers except for our prophet Muhammad. And a group of them has said that they, meaning the Imams, are greater than all of the prophets except for the Ulul Azim. And the group has denied both aforementioned beliefs and affirmed the belief that all of the prophets are greater than the Imams. This is a subject that is not for the minds to answer, nor is there a consensus upon any of the beliefs. And there have been some narrations that came from the Prophet ﷺ with regard to the commander of the faithful and the Imams from his progeny, and narrations from the truthful Imams as well as verses of the Qur'an strengthening what the first group has said. And I am looking into it, and by Allah, I seek refuge from error. As we can see, it's not a belief that every Shi'i must have. The problem is, Junior here is trying to say that it's qat'i that the prophets are better, and believing otherwise somehow implies having a belief that is un-Islamic, to which we say, هَاتُ بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Show your proof if what you say is true. And actually, what's behind this? If you use this ayah to say, وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِرًا Look, the Ahlul Bayt, وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِرًا What do you think about the Prophets? 
what, what are we saying that the prophets were not uh, pure people? They were not purified people? They were not pure people? Allah didn't choose pure people for his message? A'udhu Billah from these lawazim and insinuations. The arguments our opponents use keep getting worse and worse. And subhanAllah, it just shows you how weak their foundations are. So he's arguing because we say this verse says that Allah purified the Ahlul Bayt, that somehow means that Allah didn't purify the prophets. <laughs> is there even a point in answering this? Didn't you just say before that this is about the wives? So you, do you believe the prophets weren't pure and only Ummahat al-Mu'mineen were? What kind of logic is this? No, rather you're the one who believes the prophets weren't purified. You believe it's possible for them to commit sins, and many of them have committed sins. And your books mention that the Prophet وسلم, was suicidal, or that he was possessed. And you even have someone like Ibn Taymiyyah claiming the Prophet was a kafir all his life before receiving revelation. And you call him Shaykh al-Islam? Get out of here, bro. And in case you're going to say, oh, he just said it's shay, but it's a basic thing, substantiate your claim. Okay, let's substantiate the claim from the Quran. We agree with the Quran, right? Let's substantiate it from the Quran. What does Allah say in Surah Al-Nisa? وَمَنْ يُطَيْ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلِيهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَنْ يُطَيْ اللَّهُ Whoever obeys Allah. And whoever obeys the Rasulah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then who will they be with? Allah is going to mention now. The best of people. Ma'alladina. Fa'ulaika ma'alladina. They will be with. They are with. Ma'alladina. An'am Allahu alayhim. They will be with those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. Minan nabiyyin. From the Prophets. From the Prophets. The first people that Allah mentions that you're going to be with. If you follow Allah and the Messenger, then you're going to be with those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. Minan nabiyyin. The first people I mentioned are an nabiyyin. An nabiyyin. Then who's mentioned after? Was Siddiqeen. Interesting. So finally, he brings Dalil and quotes this verse from Surah An Nisa to prove that the Prophets are the best. And the proof he's using is that because it mentions the prophets first, then that means they are the best, better than the Siddiqeen and the Shuhada and the Salihin. Instead of answering by saying that this is simply basis tafsir bir ra'i, meaning he's making his own interpretation up, I'll just quote this verse. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And mention in the book Idris, indeed he was a man of truth and a prophet. Oh my God, the word Siddiq here is mentioned before the word Prophet. So according to Tafsir Jr., this means being a Siddiq is better than being a Prophet. Takbir. But wait a minute, doesn't the verse he quote first mention Prophets and then the Siddiqeen? It looks like we've run into a contradiction. Uh-oh. Who do we say is the best person after all of the Prophets? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Was shuhada And then the shuhada was salihin وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah! Abu Bakr is called the Siddiq, so the verse is talking about him. This is clear proof that Abu Bakr was the best person after the Prophets. And that they mock us and say Imama is nowhere in the Qur'an. <laughs> it's not like many of the Sahaba preferred Ali over Abu Bakr, or there are a hadith like At-Tayr and Al-Manzila, which are explicit proof that Ali was the best. Nah, bro, we're just Quranist and Hasbuna Kitabullah, right? Every verse we read, we can just make a tafsir for it, which suits our needs, of course. What's stopping me from looking at the verse talking about the hypocrites and saying this is about Abu Bakr? Why are you allowed to presuppose a belief and expect everyone to believe you? And you know who else had this title? None other than Sayyida Fatima, alayhi salam. She was a Siddiq al Kubra. So according to your logic, she should also be the best person after the prophets. And seeing how she died angry with Abu Bakr, then I suggest you start following her if you want to remain consistent. In summary, the best of the people were the prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon all of them. They are our examples. And if anyone was to read the Quran, this is the conclusion that they would come out with. They wouldn't come out believing in 12 imams and one of them is hiding away and this and that and all of these different beliefs. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. He keeps repeating the same thing. It's nothing but an appeal to emotion, wanting to push away people from Shiaism by saying the Quran doesn't even have the doctrines of the Shia when we saw that it does, and in turn, it's the Sunni doctrines like Adalat al-Sahaba or all the wise being pure that is not present. And how he has to reject his own hadiths and become a Quranist, otherwise his foundations wouldn't stand firm. You're not fooling anyone, Junior, so please keep talking about us. Inshallah, that will push even more people to hear about us and investigate and hopefully embrace Taishayya, as it happened with hundreds of people I personally met.
the companions irtaddu ba'da wafati nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a'udhu billah min hadhihi al-aqwal they wouldn't believe that the, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they all you know were hypocrites and they apostated and this and that and a'udhu billah disrespect and blasphemy like this and here we come again with a common shubha that says Shias believe all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ apostatize and what not. Once again, we already made a video on this. You can go ahead and check it out because at this rate, we'll only end up repeating ourselves. But the short answer is, when we read the hadiths that say that the vast majority of companions quote-unquote apostatized, whether they be in the Shia or Sunni books, irtaddu here means they went back to their old ways not that they left the religion of Islam. We read in Lisan al-Arab, volume 3, page 173 by Ibn Manzur. For the word ar-ridda, a noun from al-irtidad, and in the hadith of the resurrection and the hawd, it is said, those people kept on turning on their heels, meaning they are not following all that is necessary Islamically. So please, if you want to present a shubha, then at least have the decency to investigate the same shubhas found in your books and learn what they actually mean instead of creating your own interpretation of them. The same can be said for what you've been doing during the entire video, which is abandoning Ahl Sunnah and become a Qurqa. Sorry, we're going to repeat this sentence. The same can be said for what you've done during the entire video, which is abandoning Ahl Sunnah and becoming a Quranist. Subhanallah, it's as if you can't refute Shias using traditional Sunni methods. So you have to resort to other methods, which are still a failure by the way, and by doing so, you're considered a heretic by everyone. And this is just to show you guys how you shouldn't take these people seriously. Him or his dad or the rest of these clowns in Speaker's Corner, because they're nothing more but amateurs that end up exposing their... their... Ah, sorry, we're gonna repeat that sentence. And this is just to show you guys how you shouldn't take these people seriously. Him or his dad or the rest of these clowns in Speaker's Corner, because they are nothing more but amateurs that end up exposing their jahil when they attempt to refute the, mahlab, the madhab of the Ahlul Bayt And with this, we end the video. I hope that you have learned something, and I'll see you in the next one, inshallah.